Science Beetle. Welcome back students. In this video we're going to be focusing on calculating the area. In the previous lesson we calculated the perimeter of a square, rectangle, a triangle, as well as the circumference for a circle. But in this section, we're going to talk about how we calculate area for each of those structures. So again, let's go, go ahead and provide this information. We had a square, we had a rectangle, we had a triangle, and a circle. And so we identified that the perimeter for each of these was going to be essentially 4s here, which was side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3 plus side 4, and that was the same thing for a rectangle. And the uh, triangle, the perimeter was equal to S1 plus S2 plus S3. And the circumference for a circle was essentially what we calculated to be was pi times the diameter or 2 pi times r. Okay, and so what we want to go and do today is going to identify the area. Now keep in mind that when we look at perimeter, what we're looking for here in perimeter is going to be the distance around. So we're looking at the area all the way around the structure. Okay, area does not concern itself with the area and the distance around the structure. What it's concerned about is going to be the structure the area or the amount of space within the structure. So essentially it's concerned with, if we take here the rectangle, it's concerned with the information, all this information on the inside. And the same thing here with the rect square, all this space on the inside, same thing for the triangle in here and for the circle. It's concerned with what's inside, how much can you fill it with. So if you want to look at area, consider it kind of like the space inside. How much is there inside the borders of each of these sides, okay? And so when we look at area, area is a little bit different than perimeter. So for example, if we take into account the first section here for a circle, or excuse me, for a square, area is going to be looking at uh, the inside. And so the general formula for area is equal to S squared. And essentially what that means is that you're going to be taking the length and multiplying it times the width. And so that's how you get S squared, okay? Another way of looking at it for the rectangle, for example, would be if you take area is equal to the length times the width. Essentially, this is going to be roughly the same thing as S times S, or is going to be the same way to calculate the area for a square, okay? So let me just erase those so we don't get confused up top. And when we look at the area for a triangle, the area for a triangle is going to be one-half times the base times the height of the triangle, okay? And in the circle, the area there, area is equal to pi times r squared. And so let's explore these a little bit better. I'm going to go individually one by one so that you can see how we kind of calculate these things. So here we have a square. And when we look at the square, we're trying to figure out how much space is inside. Now, the, the length of, of a square or the width of a square can be in very many ways. So if we were to take this, uh, and what I mean by that is that you can have various units. So we can say that the units here are in inches, or we can say the units here are in millimeters, uh, or centimeters, meters, feet. That really, it's up to you. But if we were to say uh, arbitrarily, if we were to divide this here into fours, rather, then our, ask ourselves, and if we say that each one of these is just one unit, so that way we don't complicate it too much, and assume that these are all the same size, then when we're asking ourselves, when we look at the equation, area is equal to side one times side two, we want to know that we can provide some kind of unit to this. So if we go through and identify the units, and let's say that this one here at the bottom is side 1, and this one over here is side 2, we want to know what the length of side 1 is times the length of side 2. And why do we do that? Because we're trying to figure out how much we have overall. Another way that we can do this is we can actually count them all, but that doesn't really help us. So if we go through and we identify 
that side one has length of one, two, three, four, right? So if we go through and we multiply four inside one and multiply that by the length of side two, and in this particular case, side two has one, two, three, four in this direction, so here's the four here, we can say that the area of a square is going to be in this particular example. So if we went inside and we counted the boxes, we would see that we would have 16 boxes. And since we've got one, two, three, four boxes per row, and we've got four rows, four times four is 16. This would also be true if we had a smaller box, for example, of size two. So here the, the area of this particular box would be one, two. So two for the S1 and S2 would have two. So the area of this particular box would be four. And if we take the example of the uh, rectangle here, Essentially what we've got, if we take the unit here to be, let's say that we divide this in threes, well, we know that we have a height of one, but the length here is going to be three. So if we take the, the section down here as S1, or as rather, rather than S1, let's say that we call this the length and this is the width, another way that we can look at the area of S1 times S2 is to call this the area is equal to the length times the width. And in this particular case, if we substitute the length here, 3, and multiply that by 1, we find that the area of this particular rectangle is going to be 3. Now, if we change the dimensions of the rectangle, let's say that instead of 1, instead of the width being 1, let's say that we change that to 2. So do that, let's say we do this here. Now, we still have a length of three, so one, two, three, but now our width <coughs> is actually a unit of two. So we have one, the top going down two. So this is actually a width of two. So the area in this particular case is going to be length times width. So area is equal to the length. In this particular case, it's three times the width is two. So area for this particular rectangle would be six. All right, let's go ahead and take care of, uh, look at the triangle. So let's say that we have this particular triangle here. Now one of the things that we need to do is to identify the base and the height. So, sorry about that, that was my phone. But uh, if we've got the base here at the very bottom, and let's say that the base here is here at the bottom, and let's say that we give this a length of eight, and this is seven, this is six. Now we need to find out what the height is going to be. Now there's several ways, and so the height would be the height of the triangle. And I'm gonna draw this line here, and to denote it here as a right triangle. Now if you look at the triangle very carefully, in the larger triangle, we have two smaller triangles, okay? And so what we want to do is look at the area. This area is equal to one half base times the height. So we have one half times the base, one half to base, and the base in this particular case is eight. And in order for us to figure out what the height is, now we could, I could just give it to you, but we can also calculate it, right? So let's assume that this particular triangle the distance here is the same thing to the distance there on both of these. So each of these are going to be a section of four. And if we do that, all we got to use is Pythagorean's theorem to figure out what the height is going to be. So the easier one to look at here is going to be, I'm going to outline it in green. So if we look at this triangle here in green, we can figure this out. So essentially what we've got is this triangle here. This is four, this is six, and we're looking for this one here. We know that Pythagorean's theorem is equal to a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And in this particular case, 
6 is c squared, and then we can say that b squared is 4, but we're trying to figure out what a squared is. So we do this. We say a squared um, plus 16 is equal to 36. Subtract 16 minus 16, 0, 2. a squared is equal to 20. And so if we take the square root of uh, 20, a is equal to the square root of 20. Our answer here, a, in this particular case, would be 4.472 would be the value of a. So if we take this now, now that we've gone through this long exercise here, uh, we can then substitute the value here for the height, and we can substitute that up here. So let me erase this then. So substituting that there, now we have a is equal to 1 half times 8 times 4.472. And that number there is going to be 17.888 would be the area of this triangle. And lastly, let's go ahead and look at the uh, circle. So here we have the circle. We have center point and let's say that the radius here is equal to 8 okay so the circle the area of a circle is going to be very similar to the circumference except area a is equal to pi r squared and so here we're going to be cubing or multiplying r by itself in order to figure this out so we know that pi is equal to 3.14 and in this particular case, r is equal to 8. So if we substitute our values, 3.14 times r, which is 8 squared, would give us the answer that we're looking for. So this would be 3.14 times 64. 64 times 3.14 should give us an area of 200.96. Now keep in mind, this is a small circle, but since I give it a a radius of 8, I purposely kind of made it seem like it were like it was a small circle, but in reality this particular circle is actually rather big. Now keep in mind it doesn't have any units, but this is the way we calculate uh, area for a circle. So in summary, what I want to do is provide you with the areas, the equations one more time for each of these, just so that you have them handy. Okay, and so those equations are going to be as follows. The area of a square is equal to S1 times S2. The area of a rectangle is going to be the length times the width. The area of a triangle is equal to 1 half the base times the height. And then the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. All right, hope that helps. Uh, go back and review if you need to. Otherwise, subscribe us and check us out at the next video.